welcome back to my channel. This is Icona Health and Research Consult, and my name is Michael. Today, we are going to review the clinical guidelines that is mobility with deep vein thrombosis, what we call DVT. This clinical guidelines was developed by the Fraser Health. Please help this channel to grow by liking and subscribing to this channel. Let me first put this disclaimer across. This video does not in any way replace any medical or expert opinion. I will also encourage you to watch the systematic review on DVT and mobility on our channel after watching this video. Let's start by introducing the risk factors. DVT occurs in diverse patient population with risk factors including, but not limited to, immobility, surgery, acute medical illness, and malignancy. In the past, there have been many recommendations on strict bed rest for variable times after acute DVT and after the start of anticoagulation. More recently, research has shown that there is no difference between ambulation and bed rest on either the development of DVT or PE, that is pulmonary embolism. Furthermore, the complications and cost of prescribed bed rest are well documented and early ambulation in preference to initial bed rest has been strongly recommended. I want us to try to understand some basic concepts before we move on to how to assess. These basic concepts are activity as tolerated, which is documented AAT. The second one is anticoagulation therapy for prophylaxis, And the third one is anticoagulation therapy for treatment. The last but not the least is deep vein thrombosis, and the last one I will talk about is mobilization. Let's start with activity as tolerated, which is an order given by the physician indicating that the patient can be active at the ward as tolerated by the person. The next one I want to talk about is anticoagulation therapy for prophylaxis. This is a therapeutic use of anticoagulants to discourage or perhaps prevent the formation of blood clots. Examples of these drugs are low-dose subcutaneous heparin, or low molecular weight heparin. On the third concept is anticoagulation therapy for treatment, which is a therapeutic use of anticoagulant to prevent the extension or progression of an existing clot or thrombus. A typical example of such treatment doses is intravenous heparin, subcutaneous low molecular heparin, and warfarin. I will encourage you to read more on heparin in order to get a better understanding of what this clinical guidelines means here. The last but not the least is deep vein thrombosis, which implies that a clot in the deep vein causing partial or complete blockage of the blood flow. The last concept is mobilization. In this context, it refers to the person moving around that is transferring to wheelchair or perhaps ambulating around the ward. Once a person with DVT or suspected DVT is referred to physical therapy, I will highlight on two basic checklists which every rehabilitation expert should take notice of, especially the physical therapist. Checklist number one. Check to see if the patient has started anticoagulation therapy for treatment. Let's begin with four items that a physical therapist should take notice of. If it is not clear whether the patient is on anticoagulation therapy for prophylaxis or treatment, then you have to check with a pharmacist or the physician. If the patient has not started anticoagulation therapy for treatment, then all mobility orders need to be checked with a physician. This should be done immediately as mobilization is generally more beneficial than detrimental. Let's consider people with renal failure. These persons may be put on IV heparin instead of low molecular weight heparin. In such instance, check mobility orders with a physician. Again, if you are not sure what anticoagulation the person is on, then you have to check with the pharmacist or perhaps the physician. Another consideration is patients living with cancer. Now, DVT may be progressing despite these people might be on anticoagulation therapy for treatment. And in this case, you need to check mobility orders with the physician. Thank you very much for being with us through checklist number one. We are here to move to checklist number two. Over here, we want to check the chart to make sure there is no activity restriction. If a patient is already on anticoagulation therapy for treatments, that is in post-op patients, and also if a DVT is suspected or confirmed, there is no need to stop mobilization unless there are specific orders from the physician to do so. 
we should always remember that beliefs can never overshadow evidence base. If you like this video, please subscribe and recommend it to others. It has been a long held belief within the physical therapy fraternity that it is unsafe to mobilize a patient with DVT for the risk of them developing a pulmonary embolism. A review of the current literature does not support this belief. In fact, the current evidence shows that there is no increase in incidence of DVT progression or PE development in patients with an existing DVT who are mobilized as opposed to having them in bed rest. The literature suggests that the benefit exceeds any possible risk to mobilization or to mobilizing a patient with DVT. As healthcare practitioners, we work as a team. So always don't forget to consult your physician or pharmacist before you mobilize a patient with DVT. This video, as we said, was made for education purposes and does not replace any medical opinion or perhaps an expert opinion. This is Icona Health and Research Consult and my name is Michael. Kindly recommend our videos by sharing and subscribing.